So one of the first jobs you're likely to have as a graduate geologist is logging drill core. And Sam here from Ravenswood Gold is going to explain how you do it. So when the drillers drill the core, it comes out in these kind of tubes of rock. Um, they always put it in the core trays, starting at this end and then progress down the, down the rod. They'll do it in runs of generally three metres and then um, record the depth, how much they drilled and how much they've recovered. A diamond drill hole produces a long, narrow strip of fresh outcrop through a target beneath the surface. That provides an exceptional opportunity to understand the geology and mineralisation of that target in 3D. To make the most of that opportunity, the core needs to be logged accurately and consistently. Consistency is particularly important when there are two or more geologists logging core on the same project. So the first thing we do once we get the core back to the shed is mark it up. Uh, we do that by laying it out on this orientation rack. We use the driller's orientation marks to, to mark the bottom of the core. So the drillers mark a line there and then we use that, line it up to the, to the bottom of this rack. A bit of playing around with it, jigsawing it up. Also once we're confident that's where it fits, uh, we can continue on down the line. We like to have three orientation marks here, which is this, this red line here, just to say where the bottom of the hole is. The more ori marks we can get in a row, the more confidence we have that that mark is the bottom of the hole. So we've got one there, another one here, and this is from down the hole, and we've already had a straight line. We can straight line it from here, indicating we've got a good confidence that that's the bottom of the hole. Um, also, you need to know which way is downhole, so we do that by just putting in downhole, downhole arrows. So. After that, we mark out the metre marks. You can just go along, ticking the metre marks on, generally in chalk, just to make sure you, you don't mess it up. So someone's already done the chalk here as well. So we can put that in as 291. Um, when I'm logging core, I like to, to wet it all. It's a lot easier to see, see all the structures and minerals. Um, and I like to walk up and down the, the entire rack just to get a feel for, for what's going on. It's easier to pick out certain zones and lithologies when you've got the whole picture there. When marking out boundaries, um, one thing to look for is major, major contacts with, with rock types. Here you can see there's a clear andesite dike intruding into our, our tonal light at Ravenswood. So I just normally mark that in with the yellow pencil measure it in, so that's 248.05, just an 05, and then the end of the boundary, which is 249.7. Um, another thing we log is the alteration and, and ore minerals. So here, there's a nice zone of sericite alteration around a nice, nice juicy, um, Quartz sulfide vein. Um, so a good way to test for vein or carbonate veins and carbonate alteration is to use the um, the 10% HCl we have here. Uh, generally, if you just tap it on, it'll fizz up like that. Um, when we have have nice nice quartz sulfide veins, we want to know which way they're dipping and striking. So we use this chronometer. Um, loading the core into the chronometer, you want the downhole arrows going that way. Uh, push it into you get to the structure you want to measure. Line the apex of the structure downhole at the zero there, and then follow it along here until you hit these set of numbers here, which is the, the alpha angle. In this case, it's 30. And then for the beta angle, you line up the bottom of hole line to where it intersects here. And then for this case, it's 30. Um, to explain that in kind of a 3D sense, this line here indicates the bottom of hole. So if you hold that in relation to how it's drilling like that, you can kind of get, see the vein is flat lying ish if you i guess use i'll show you there use that so you can get a rough dip and strike based on orientating in 3d so once we've went through and put all our intervals in uh, i'll then go through and type it up on the computer the program we use here is log chief so it's pretty much excel with 
with um, conditions. So you can only put in certain tabs and they're all based on lithology codes. And we also do that for, for the alteration as well, go through and similar, and, and similar thing for the minerals. We just put in the, the mineral percentages we see for each, each vein. The structures we took take, taken alphas and betas, we also put those into this tab. So we also have to test the, the MagSus and the RQD. MagSus is done using this tool, pretty simple. Zero it out, test the meter, and then zero it out again. Uh, so the field is here normally measure the RQD, which is rock quality designation. RQD is a standard indicator of how much unbroken rock there is in a given interval of core. It's calculated as the percentage of core that occurs in pieces longer than 10 centimetres. In a one metre interval, that percentage is simply the total length in centimetres of pieces longer than 10 centimetres. So another important thing for when you're, especially in the resource stage, is knowing the specific gravity of rocks for when you're doing your tons. So for that, we just pick out a piece of core that's over 10 centimetres in size, and then we take it into the SG room. We've got to take a, a wet and dry weight. So you take the dry weight first, uh, record that weight, and then just, just put it into here and get a wet weight. After that's done, we put them both into an Excel document that calculates the SG. Uh, so once it's all processed and logged, uh, we've got to cut and sample it because we only send off half the core and then keep the core just as a, a kind of archive. So what they do is they'll load the core up into these what we call boats, um, keep the ori line slightly left to centre just so when it cuts we can keep the ori line so when we've got it in storage. Um, what they do then is they'll put it in the saw and then send it down. It'll just automatically cut it and then they'll get it out of the boat and load it back into the tray. Um, once it's cut, it'll look like this. For each metre interval, we'll go into a calico bag, um, which will then be sent off to the lab. So that's a brief introduction to what geologists do when logging drill core. Procedures vary a little depending on the equipment used and the type of deposit being drilled, but the general principles are the same. If you'd like an introduction to how drill core is produced at the drill rig, then click on the card at the bottom right of this video.